And now, your weather first. Good evening, I'm 22 News Storm Team Meteorologist Adam Stremko. Here's what you can expect as you're heading out the door tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. Cloudy skies, 22 degrees, 7 a.m. Cloudy, 24 degrees. Cloudy at 9 a.m., 26 degrees. We are tracking some snow moving in tomorrow afternoon. We'll show it to you in just a few minutes in the 22 News Storm Team forecast. Live from the 22 News Broadcast Center, this is 22 News at 10. We are heading into the colder months with winter weather upon us. And tonight, 22 News speaks to a specialist on how to best prepare for the snowy days ahead. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening for 22 News at 10. I'm Alana Flood. And I'm Melissa Torres. We'll get to that story in just a moment, but first we have some breaking news to share with you tonight. That's right. We're going to show you some live video of an accident right here on I-91 North in Longmeadow at exit 2. It's creating a major, major backup. That's right, Alana. We'll continue to update you on this story as it develops on air, online, and on the 22 News mobile app. And as we said earlier, snow is on its way tomorrow, and now it's time to gear up with some winter supplies and necessities. 22 News reporter Kaylee Collins visited a local hardware store to get suggestions on how to best prepare. As we inch closer to the official start of the winter, seasonal preparations are a must. It's better to be prepared and do it in advance. That's what shoppers at Rocky's Ace Hardware in Agawam were doing ahead of Sunday's expected snowfall. We're getting some pet friendly salt for the walkway and we need a good shovel. Rocky's manager John Beston said many customers were coming in in search of ice mill and shovels. He also offered some advice for those who may be pulling out their snow blowers for the first time since last year. You want to fire it up before it snows to make sure it's going to start. You don't want to have six inches of snow outside and then realize it's not going to start on you. And when it comes to winter weather supplies, John says that there's one item that is often overlooked, but is definitely something that you're going to want to have in case of snowy weather. One of these. Well, everyone forgets to buy snow brushes for their car until it's actually they're out there scrape, you know, you know shoveling it with their glove instead of uh, actually buying a snow brush. Lock the icer is another good one. So if it's like a freezing rain event that it, you know, they can get there into the cars and whatnot. So now's the time to grab those supplies if you haven't done so. The Agawam Rockies is open until 7 on Saturdays and opens at 9 a.m. Sunday morning. Because you don't want to be, you know, struggling at the last minute with the snow on the ground and trying to drive all over looking for supplies when Every year, people run out of things and they can't find the supplies that they need after they're already gone out of the stores. Everybody stay safe out there. Have a great holiday. Working for you in West Springfield, Kaylee Collins, 22 News. This is a 22 News Storm Team weather alert. Good evening, everybody. We have issued that uh, weather alert for that snow on the way for tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. It's not looking like a big storm, but enough snow that could it slow you down, especially if you're going to be driving tomorrow afternoon and evening. Live look from our Springfield camera, and you can see that we are dealing with overcast skies out there. The clouds have been moving in all evening long, and we do have a winter weather advisory in effect for all of Western Massachusetts for tomorrow. Starts at 10 a.m. and will continue until 7 a.m. on Monday. That's why we do expect that snow again in the afternoon and evening hours that could make for some slow going. ESP Live Doppler radar, nothing out there, so staying quiet as we head through tonight. Clouds and radar, you can see the clouds continue to thicken on up, so it'll be mostly cloudy as we head through tonight, but we are staying dry into tomorrow morning. 32 right now in Westfield, 31 in Springfield, 33 in Northampton, it's 30 in Orange, 30 in Pittsfield, 33 right now over in Great Barrington. So here's a look at the day cast for tomorrow. Cloudy skies at 7 a.m., 24 degrees. Could start to see a few flurries and snow showers developing as we head towards noon, especially in the Berkshires. 32 degrees and then we're dealing with that snow by 3 o'clock 35 degrees snow at 7 o'clock 28 degrees we'll show you how much you can expect and when it will all come to an end in just a few minutes in the 22 news storm team forecast new tonight a snuggly and furry charity event made its way back to the mass mutual center tonight during the springfield thunderbirds game the thunderbirds held their annual sixth teddy bear toss Fans could toss in new and gently used stuffed animals on the ice in celebration of the T-Birds' first goal. Since 2016, the Springfield Thunderbirds have teamed up with teddy bear pools and spas to provide more than 20,000 stuffed animals to local charities. 
I think it's a great idea. I love that we get our kids involved in it, in the giving, and they learn that it's great to give back to. Some people don't have as good as life, so and they don't really get much Christmas stuff. So we're chugging teddy bears today for them to get good Christmas. And tonight's teddy bears will be donated to a variety of charitable organizations, including the Boys and Girls Club, Square One, and the Ronald McDonald House. The Springfield Thunderbirds goal is to provide gifts and smiles to underprivileged and underserved youth in the greater Springfield community. The Men of Color Health Awareness Group, or MOCA, hosted an informational reception on public health myths. I attended tonight's discussion and got some insight on how important a dialogue about public health is. Saturday night's discussion was all about dispelling myths and presenting facts about the COVID-19 virus and the vaccines. MOCA's mission is to empower men of color and their families in the greater Springfield area with the tools needed to eliminate health disparities. It's the myth that's really confusing folks. This is some of the stuff that's on, um, that's on the internet and we want to make sure that people have an opportunity to ask someone that they can really get the truth from and also do their own research. The event is important to the Springfield community to discuss how black and brown communities are disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. In our community, we know that we're not, we're not following up as well as we should to keep safe in our community. So we just want to keep educating people and, um, and give them a chance to um, ask questions and hopefully find a cure for this um, terrible um, virus that's um, still affecting us, black, brown, and white. Dr. Wilmore Webley, an associate professor of microbiology at UMass Amherst, hosted the discussion to address people's concerns when it comes to misinformation around the COVID-19 pandemic. People of color have died disproportionately from COVID. And what it means is that it's probably because people are not going for health care as often. And I think it's important that people have an opportunity to have a conversation about that um, in this setting where they can ask their questions and get them answered. So their main goal is to start a dialogue and encourage the community to prioritize their health by getting regular health screenings and making sure their immunization records are up to date. A 22 News follow-up now, the dangerousness hearing for the suspect in a shooting at the Greenfield Gardens apartment complex on July 25th has moved to December 16th. According to the Northwestern District's Attorney's Office, 28-year-old Quadre Hutchins of Springfield was arrested after allegedly firing at least 12 rounds of ammunition into Forbes Court. The shots damaged the screen door, main door, and siding surrounding the doors. Hutchins was arraigned for the shooting on Monday and is being held without bail pending the outcome of the hearing. Massachusetts State Police are warning residents of a scheme spoofing their phone numbers. When you receive a spoofing call, the caller ID may show up as the state police barracks or headquarters, but schemers are using this fake ID to hide the real source of the call. The callers allegedly ask for personal information such as social security, bank information and payments. State police are reminding residents that they will never call and ask for personal information over the phone. The Russell Montgomery Police Department is asking for the public's help in identifying a suspect that stole several power tools from the Montgomery Highway garage in November. The suspect allegedly entered the garage on Friday, November 17th, around 1 o'clock and stole several power tools. Police believe that the suspect is a black man between the ages of 30 and 40 and is approximately 5'11 in height with a medium build. If you have any information on the suspect, you are asked to contact a detective by emailing the address on your screen.
You're watching 22 News at 10. We are well into the holiday shopping season, but this year it comes with high inflation. That's right, Alana. 22 News reporter Heath Cab looked into how rising costs are affecting businesses for holiday shopping. According to the National Retail, holiday retail sales are predicted to soar as high as $960 billion this year. Last year, that number hit a record $889 billion. This record high spending across the country comes amidst continuing inflation and some holiday staples, including toys and gift wrap, have increased substantially compared to over last year. I mean, certain things have started to cost more for sure, um, but I do my best to try not to pass on those costs when I can. The current inflation rate in the U.S. is still over 7%, and while some products have been affected more than others, everyone's pockets have and will be affected after shopping for loved ones. In fact, according to Deloitte, about half of shoppers cite higher costs as the reason they'll be spending more this year. And as we're only a few weeks away from the holidays, holiday shopping is picking up, inflation or not. Certainly in the last couple of uh, weeks, we've definitely seen an uptick in people thinking about the holidays. And now that it's only 15 days away, I think folks are starting to realize uh, what date it is. <laughs> if some or all of your holiday shopping is still on your to-do list, there are ways to save, such as comparing prices, using coupons or discount codes online, making sure you stick to a budget, and avoiding last-minute shopping. Working for you, I'm Heath Kalb, 22 News. The online auction for items inside East Hampton Center Pepin School is ongoing, and today there was a preview of everything available. In conjunction with Rosher Brothers Auctioneers, the auction includes nearly 700 separate lots of items, including office equipment, classroom furnishings like student and teacher desks, and more. Before the conclusion of the online auction on Sunday at 4 p.m., Rosher Brothers invites everyone to come into the school to get an in-person look at what they can get online. There's everything, there's whiteboards, there's uh, chairs, there's maps, there's tables, there's desks, there's cafeteria equipment. It's uh, quite a lot of stuff and, and like I said, the city is really hoping that the local people that can use it can, can buy it and come and get it at, at a decent price. For more information and a link to that auction, you can visit our website at www.lp.com. Local police departments and the Hamden County Sheriff's Department teamed up today to raise money for Special Olympics programs. 22 News reporter Duncan McLean has the story. Sometimes it helps to have friends in high places. Special Olympics programs here in Western Massachusetts benefiting from a unique fundraiser. It's cop on top of the Chicopee Walmart. So all the money raised here goes back to the Special Olympics. Um, it stays right here in Western Mass, and they use it to provide uniforms and stuff like that for the athletes when they go to co uh, competitions. Now, this is the first Cop on Top fundraiser here at the Walmart since 2019. You'd expect a post-pandemic surge of both donations and interest, but it didn't exactly play out that way. Organizers telling us they need money now more than ever before. In 2019, LETR collected more than $65 million. In 2020, that fell to $43 million. Last year, 42 million. The good work of the Special Olympics, though, continues all the same. They treat me like I'm an adult and not like no kid. I have a lot of friends in the programs and they're like mentors to me. Special Olympics does a lot for us athletes, so it's a way that for us athletes to give our time back to them. Cop on Top organizers told us that interest from nearby departments was also lower for this year's event. To make up for the smaller group, the Sheriff's Department sold sponsorships for the first time, starting the day $1,500 up. Those who did participate, though, brought all the enthusiasm necessary. It's the best thing, you know, the camaraderie amongst the departments knowing the only thing the Law Enforcement Torch Fund does is raise money for Special Olympics. And they know they have people in their communities that are part of Special Olympics. We have many teams here in Chicopee and in West Springfield. So to know that they're helping out the local teams, not just the whole statewide, because money will stay local. In all, the group had a local goal of raising $9,000 this year, 500 more than they raised in 2019. Working for you, Duncan McLean, 22 News. 
You're running out of time if you want to visit the Festival of Trees at the Mass Mutual Center. The last day for the annual display is tomorrow. The 22nd Annual Festival of Trees is a local seasonal favorite. The sights and sounds of the season are on full display with nearly 140 decorated trees this year. These trees are donated and decorated by area businesses, organizations, families and individuals, and then raffled off to benefit the Springfield Boys and Girls Club and its community initiatives. The Festival of Trees is a fundraiser for the Springfield Boys and Girls Club, but its outreach is far more than that because it is a community event. We welcome 20,000 people through our doors over the course of the 17 days that we're here, so it really has turned into something that the community enjoys coming to. These trees will wind up in the homes of 138 fortunate families, so before time runs out, get your tickets. For more information, visit our website at www.lp.com. This is a 22 News Storm Team weather alert. Good evening, everybody. We have issued that weather alert for that snow on the way tomorrow. It's not going to be a big storm, but uh, we are going to be talking about some accumulating snow and really haven't seen much at all so far this season. So here's what you can expect tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. The snow will begin between about noon and 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Do expect the steadiest snow to fall between about 5 and 11 o'clock tomorrow afternoon and evening. And then we're looking for untreated roads especially to become snow covered and slippery. So keep that in mind tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night as well. The snow should taper off after midnight and pretty much be done by the morning commute on Monday. So that's some good news. Just some leftover slippery conditions in some of the side streets potentially as we head into Monday morning. So clouds and radar. You can see that we are dealing with the clouds that continue to move on in. There is the snow that we're going to be tracking out over the Great Lakes. It's going to kind of fill in as it moves towards us during the overnight hours into tomorrow. So here's the sky cast. We'll take you through it hour by hour. Here we are at midnight. See, so we have the clouds in place, but we are staying dry. So we stay dry overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. There we are at 7 a.m. So we have errands to run tomorrow morning, get things done before the snow gets uh, going as we head into the afternoon hours. You can see there we are at noon, seeing that snow moving in from west to east. It may take a little while to reach the ground. The air is going to be pretty dry. So we'll start to see that snow in the Berkshires and then the hills, and then it overspreads all of western Massachusetts as we head into the afternoon hours. You can see it really starts to fill in again after 5 o'clock. So 7 o'clock, we're dealing with the steadiest snow, a little bit heavier as it uh, fills on in over uh, the evening hours. 
There we are at midnight though. You can see the snow starting to taper off. It's getting lighter. And then as we head towards 7 o'clock Monday morning, the snow is done. We have the clouds in place. And then as we head through the day on Monday, the clouds start to break up. And we start to see more in the way of sunshine as we head into Monday afternoon and Monday evening. And you can see skies will be clearing out Monday night. And it does look dry as we head towards Tuesday and also Wednesday. So your forecast looks like this for tonight. Mostly cloudy overnight lows 18 to 24 county cast tomorrow. Hampton County cloudy with that uh, light snow developing during the afternoon, getting steadier later in the afternoon. 35 Springfield, 35 Westfield, around 31 in Blandford, Hampshire County. Same thing. Cloudy in the morning, then snow developing as we head into the afternoon. 35 Northampton, 34 in Belchertown. Franklin County cloudy with that snow developing as we head into the afternoon hours 34 Greenfield 32 in Orange and the Berkshire same thing cloudy with that snow developing you'll be the first to see it around noontime 31 in Pittsfield 32 in Lee 33 in Great Barrington so as far as accumulation goes and again we're not expecting all that much about one to three inches Central and Eastern Hampton County, Eastern Hampshire and Franklin County. As you head up into the hills in the Berkshires, a little bit more, three to possibly five inches of snow. 22 new storm team, seven day forecast. And then as we head into tomorrow night, again, the snow tapers off. Monday, drying out sunshine, but staying on the cool side. 38 degrees Tuesday, sunshine 39. Sunshine on Wednesday, 38 degrees. They're going to be tracking another storm system that could affect us as we head towards the end of the week. Chance for some rain or snow on Thursday in the afternoon, 39 degrees and more rain and snow potentially on Friday, high around 40 and then we'll dry out as we head into next weekend. Partly sunny on Saturday with temperatures staying on the cooler side in the upper 30s. Seven day forecast. It's always online at WWLP.com and of course you can track that snow on the way tomorrow on your mobile device. Just download the free 22 News app. You're watching 22 News at 10. Endangered sea turtles arrived in the Florida Keys from Massachusetts on Friday to be treated after suffering from cold stunning. 20 endangered Kemp's Ridley sea turtles were found stranded around Cape Cod Bay. This is due to hypothermic reaction that occurs when sea turtles are exposed to cold water for a prolonged period of time. This reaction causing them to stop eating and swimming. The rescued turtles were flown to the Keys to be warmed and receive treatment. The former Minneapolis police officer who kneeled on George Floyd's back while another officer kneeled on his neck was sentenced Friday to three and a half years in prison. J. Alexander King pleaded guilty in October to a state count of aiding and abetting second degree manslaughter. In exchange, a charge of aiding and abetting murder was dropped. King is already serving a federal sentence for violating Floyd's civil rights and the state and federal sentences will be served at the same time. 
A Wisconsin postal worker was fatally shot while delivering mail Friday evening. Police confirmed the postal worker had more than 18 years of service. The circumstances leading up to the shooting are unknown. The Milwaukee Police Department is leading the investigation with the assistance of the United States Postal Inspection Service, as well as the FBI. Police are seeking unknown suspects and anyone with information is encouraged to come forward. So here's what we're looking at as far as accumulation goes tomorrow. Not a big snowstorm, but enough to slow you down during the afternoon. One to three inches tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night in most of the Pioneer Valley. Three to five inches as you head up into the hills and the Berkshires. The good news is it ends pretty early, uh, late Sunday night or early Monday morning. So it should be done by the morning commute on Monday. It's still going to be cool as we head through next week, though. Partly sunny Monday afternoon, 38 degrees. Tuesday and Wednesday, sunshine in the upper 30s. And then we may be talking about some more rain or possibly snow as we head towards the end of the week, Thursday into Friday. Temperatures in the upper 30s to right around 40 degrees drying out next weekend. So if you're a snow lover, you're in luck. We will finally see some snow, accumulating snow on the way for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, that is just wonderful. Thank you so much, Adam. We'll be back at 11 tonight. Have a great night.